Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning to the 148th consecutive Memorial Day Parade from Westminster, Maryland, sponsored by the American Legion Post Number 31. That's right, I said 148th consecutive Memorial Day Parade. This parade is possibly the longest continuous operating observance of Memorial Day in the United States. It was started in 1868 by Miss Mary Shellman, a 16-year-old young lady at West, from Westminster whose father happened to be the mayor. And she listened to a call from General Logan, who was the commander of the Grand Army of the Republic, and he asked every community in America to cut flowers and take those flowers to a cemetery and place them on the graves of Union soldiers. And Miss Mary Shellman organized two schools, one St. John's Elementary Catholic School, which was located on Main Street, right where the Carroll County Public Library is now operating, and then one from Westminster Elementary School, which was located at the corner of Center and Green Street. She asked the children to cut flowers and meet her on the corner, and they proceeded to the Westminster Cemetery to place those flowers on the graves of Union soldiers. And they continued that tradition for many, many years. And in 1920, Miss Shellman had gotten up in age, and the American Legion Post Number 31 had been organized in Westminster, made up primarily of veterans from World War I. They agreed to work with Mrs. Shellman and take over the sponsorship of this parade, and they have done so ever since. And we call it a, a remembrance and an observance. It is not a celebration because we don't want to celebrate those who gave their life, their everything, and their service to their nation. They showed us by their sacrifice and their service their loyalty to the United States of America, and so we now honor them, and we observe their sacrifice, and we observe and honor all of those who have served in all of the wars, just not the First World War, but every conflict that America has participated in. So that's why today in this parade and this observance, you will see units starting from the American Revolutionary War all the way through Vietnam and Afghanistan, and we're paying tribute to those who gave their service to America. We hope you're here watching the parade. If you're not here watching the parade and I'm watching us on Channel 19, the American Legion, of which I am the chaplain, is very pleased that you're doing so. And we would like to thank Carroll Community Media for their cooperation in televising this parade to those who can't join us. But in the future, try to make plans to be here, not only to watch the parade, but to go to Westminster Cemetery where there will be observances and a, the American Legion will conduct those services. We will have the singing of America. We will have the Pledge of Allegiance. We will have a recitation of uh, Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. We will have a speech by Commander Lou Trott, who is this year's commander of the American Legion, will be as of June of this year. We'll have a benediction by Pastor Ke Kevin Clemenson of the Grace Lutheran Church. The national anthem will be sung by Chelsea Ingram, the weather person from Channel 13. Uh, the firing squad will be from Melville Post, Veterans of Foreign Wars, with taps by Greg Wance and David Miller, a very moving service, and you should try to make an effort to see that also. And that will follow directly after we finish the televising of the parade. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a nice, peaceful Memorial Day, and please pray for all of those who gave their service and their commitment, some the ultimate commitment, for this country to serve God and country. Thank you. Good morning again, ladies and gentlemen. In just a few moments, the parade will begin. It is 10 o'clock and the parade has kicked off from Monroe Street, where Westminster Middle School is, and where St. John's Elementary School is in the church. 
They will proceed down Monroe Street to Pennsylvania Avenue, turn on Pennsylvania Avenue, come up Pennsylvania Avenue to Main Street, Main Street all the way up to Main and Anchor, where the parade will turn in to Anchor Street to go to the Westminster Cemetery, where memorial services will be held this morning. The parade will kick off in its usual fashion with the Westminster City Police proceeding the parade to make sure that the route is clear. And by the way, the American Legion Post Number 31 likes to express its gratitude to all the Westminster employees, both the city police, the city employees, and the county's employees who do so much to make this parade a success. They are out here early in the morning setting up the barriers and making sure the parade route is clear and that it is clear throughout the parade. Uh, just think about the monumental task of directing traffic off of Route 140, off of Route 27, off of Route 194 and 97, 27. Uh, Westminster is a hub of a lot of routes and a lot of traffic has to be taken care of so this parade can proceed. And the American Legion Post would like to thank those who are involved from the city government and the county government in making sure that this transpires. But following the police uh, car, we will have the American Legion Riders. The American Legion Riders are a group from Post 131 who ride motorcycles. And they enjoy the activity of riding motorcycles, but they not only do that for fun and relaxation, but they do it to raise money. And they have conducted a lot of events in which they have raised money for the American Legion. And primarily, they are the largest single non-profit organization that contributes to Carroll Hospice. And I'm sure most of you know what Carroll Hospice is. Uh, a place that has a, for patients who are leaving us this world so that they may die in dignity. And the American Legion, year after year, the American Legion Riders has been one of the primary donors of funds to them. Uh, so I'm telling you this now because when the American Legion Riders arrive at our camera sites, you're going to hear a great roar. The motorcycles are loud, but the motorcycles are loud because everybody loves them. And a group of men and women who enjoy motorcycle riding from all professions, doctors, lawyers, workmen of all kind, uh, ordinary citizens, do this to, for their enjoyment, but primarily to raise funds that donate to charity. And by the way, the American Legion happens to be one of the largest philanthropic organizations in the nation. Uh, they not only contribute to things like a parade, but they also are a leader in providing scholarships on every level, both uh, high school, technical, and college. They're big supporters here in Carroll County of Carroll <laughs> Community College, McDaniel College, and just about every basic charity that you can think of. And here come the Legion Riders. I will not try to speak over them because they are too loud, but here they are led by an old truck with the, all the flags on it. The American Legion Riders, the parade is underway. Along the route, the riders have stopped a couple times and passed out American flags to the people along the route, primarily children. The great roar of Harley Davidson. As you can see, the American Legion riders constitute a large section 
of men and women. And here are some of the uh, riders who have gotten off of their motorcycles and they're passing out flags, primarily to the children and spectators along the route. I hope our cameras are able to pick up those persons who are passing out the flags. The weather today is absolutely outstanding. A wonderful day for a parade. A wonderful day to be riding your motorcycle. I hear the sound of drums. The Westminster Band is on its way. I believe it's at the intersection of Longwell Avenue and Main Street, the old post office building, and here they come. It always makes you feel extremely good to hear the thump of those drums and the marching of the Westminster Municipal Band, which we all should be very, very proud of. By the way, the Westminster Municipal Band is also the official band for the Maryland State Firemen and appear in their convention every year in Ocean City leading their parade and have done that for many years. They also appear in parades throughout the county and the state, both here in Maryland and in Pennsylvania. They are well organized, well conducted by Miss Sandy Miller and here they come with the Westminster Police Department leading the way. The band, of course, is led by the reef carrier, which we talked about before, Harley Arbaugh, very symbolic of the observance of this day, which used to be known as Decoration Day, and that was changed after the First World War to Veterans Day or Memorial Day, so it commemorates the sacrifice of all people. Now let's listen to the band with the color guard beautifully in front, led by Captain Raymond Banker.
second is followed by the American Legion Color Guard. The American Legion Color Guard is made up of Vince Dell, Tom Long, Ray Wells, Brandon Bosley, and Danny Boone, the American Legion Color Guard. Then we have a World War II Jeep. The uh, Grand Marshal is Mr. Wilbur Haynes, a World War II veteran. He's accompanied by World War II reenactors. The Jeep is driven by Greg Stenghouse. That's followed by a convertible with the commander of the Maryland Division, Will Trott, who will be the main speaker at the cemetery, followed by a uh, Thunderbird driven by Mr. Todd Brown. And Todd Brown, I think, has... We're not sure who he has riding in there, along with his grandson. It's followed by another convertible. The American Legion, uh, the guest, the Gettysburg Address speaker, Jeff Scott. And then uh, Miss Poppy, I'm wearing a poppy, you may have noticed. Miss Poppy commemorates a battle in which the great poem of Flanders Field was written, symbolizing all of those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice to this nation. The Ladies Auxiliary of the American Legion sells those poppies to help support activities for wounded veterans in VA hospitals, clinics, and nursing homes throughout the country. And especially here in Carroll County, they do a magnificent job. That's followed by the VFW Post uh, 467 and some of their Mo Movell Posts, followed by some of their riders on motorcycles. We next have the uh, VFW leadership in a convertible. Sharon riding or driving. This is what's called a, a deuce and a half from World War II all through the Korea, Korean and Vietnam service with a lot of uh, VFW members riding that deuce and a half. Everybody who's been in the service knows what a deuce and a half is. We have a World War II veteran walking in the parade and I apologize because I do not know his name, but he's not a young person, and he deserves a wonderful round of applause for being able to walk this parade, especially uphill from Pennsylvania Avenue. Disabled American veterans in a convertible. The commander of the disabled veterans is Barbara Sater, followed by a truck in which ladies, I believe, from disabled veterans have gotten out and are passing out flags to the people along the route. By the way, there's no, we do not allow people to throw candy or celebrate it anyway, but the flag is a symbolic of patriotism and service to the country. So you can pass out flags, but there never has been allowed any sort of celebration like the throwing out of candy or beads or something. This is followed by a truck from the veterans of disabled veterans. They have a small float behind it with some disabled veterans riding on it. They also do a wonderful job at VA hospitals and clinics. <clears throat> we have a City of Westminster car uh, with a lot of young people in it. Very happy to have them in the parade. Priest and behind this uh, motorcycle, which is approaching now, we have the mayor and city council. The motorcycle is ridden by Mr. Rothschild, 
County Commissioner of Carroll County, one of the five. The mayor in Westminster and the city council now comes with their banner. Of course, the mayor is Mr. Kevin Utz. The city council has uh, Mr. Dr. Wach, uh, Greg Pecorero, Tchaikovsky, uh, Suzanne Albert, all city council persons. That's followed by a convertible with Senator Justin Reedy, uh, the newly appointed senator for Carroll County. Justin has served his first term in the Maryland legislature. Dennis Frazier was in the next car and walking here in a parade. Here comes the Westminster Owls High School Band. Break up the band. What a wonderful sound. Could not have been any more appropriate than playing on Strike Up the Band as they passed our vantage point. Here is the Marine Corps League of Carroll County, their color guard, followed by a contingent from the Young Marines. The Young Marines is a wonderful youth organization. If you want to teach, if you want to teach your children patriotism and leadership. Let them join the young Marines. They'll learn discipline. That's followed by a 1968, what they call a motley mule. This is anyone who was in the Vietnam War knows this vehicle, was transported by helicopter and taken into the jungles to fight. And that's how terrible it looked in Vietnam followed by the count composite post of the ROTC, Civil Air Patrol. Another wonderful youth organization, the Civil Air Patrol, teaching discipline, leadership, and skills for young people. Civil Air Patrol has been around since the Second World War. They are followed by a contingent of World War II and Reenactors, 29th Division. 29th Division is Maryland's own division, Maryland and Pennsylvania. That's a symbol of blue and gray. And if you know some World War II history, they were one of the leading divisions in the invasion of Normandy. We have a lot of emphasis on World War II for this parade because if you realize, this is the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II, which took place in May of 1945 and the 75th anniversary since the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Again, part of the Army National Guard with this Humvee vehicle. Brute of a vehicle, but needed to protect all the people who rode in them the landmines and the <laughs> propelled rockets. You needed protection and these vehicles provided it.
they are followed by another group of World War II uh, reenactors in a, in a World War II Jeep and World War II reenactors carrying equipment like bulldozers. World War I M1 rifles. Here's our military transport vehicle. Followed by an ambulance. The ambulances uh, came from World War II. They were... <laughs> used in Korea. Your commentator served in a mash outfit in Korea during the Korean War, 1950-51. We saw many, many, many of those, heli those ambulances. Unfortunately, too many coming and going. Jeeps filled with an army carrier with children enjoying the parade and being transported. Another deuce and a half vehicle. They are followed by Civil War reenactors, uh, Troop 19th Georgia Infantry. And I never can figure out each year how they march in those hobnail boots and those awfully, gotta be awfully hot woolen uniforms exacting to every measure. Followed by the Sons of the American Legion with their color guard and a few convertibles. The convertibles carry ancestors of those who served in the Revolutionary War. Uh, that's why they're called Sons of the American Revolution. They're a very patriotic outfit led by Mr. Massey for many, many years. And they also raise funds to support charitable activities. The Daughters of the American Revolution, uh, also a very patriotic outfit. Uh, Miss Sally, uh, from Wakefield Valley. And here's a f float with the children of the American Revolution. These people have been coming up this hill all the way from uh, Railroad Avenue, we're located opposite the old Charles Carroll Hotel, and it's a tough walk, but they're doing it. They're out of line, but they're the uh, Carroll County C-A-R uh, Oh, this is the, uh, we have some Civil War reenactors following the uh, Children of the American Legion, the, uh, they were lined up a little bit incorrectly, so our list doesn't match the order of parade, but we're catching up with you. The engine that you hear is from the 40 and 8. 40 and 8 is a branch of the American Legion from the First World War, when our soldiers landed in France, they were put in box in box. They're really hoofing it up. They were put in box cars, which were marked 40 and 8, either 40 soldiers or 8 horses. And so that became the symbol of veterans of the First World War, also a charitable activity that raises funds primarily here in Carroll County for student nurses at Carroll Community College. The next musical group approaching us is the Carroll Christian School Marching Band, a beautiful red, white, and blue outfit. And we will pause to listen to the band.
nice looking outfits. And here comes the band. God bless America. These are children from Carroll Christian Academy on the float and marching. They are followed by a very sharp marching outfit this is the Army ROTC Military Strike Force Battalion from Century High School. If you have a student in one of our schools like Winters Mill or Century and you want them to join a great activity, this is again a great activity for you. Sharp looking group. Anyone who's ever been in the military or around the military recognize the cadence calls. A great activity to keep you in step, to keep you disciplined, and keep you together as a unit. This is followed by Cub Scout Pack 110. We're going to have a whole procession now of Boy Scouts and Cub Scout Packs. I hope we can identify them correctly, but sometimes we will mess up, and we appreciate that. You're cooperation with us in misidentifying if we do so we hope not but we thank each and every one of them for being in this parade for showing their patriotism for showing their support for veterans showing their support for their community and God and country many of these outfits are sponsored by churches and we thank them the American Legion for doing so the Legion itself sponsors a Boy Scout troop. Troop 2007 from Westminster. Troop number 381. And we have them followed by Cub Scout Pack number 391. 393. 393 from Grace Lutheran Church. 395 Cub Scouts. Sandy Mount United Methodist Church. Six thirty one 
Cub Scout, Westminster United Methodist. We have to give thanks to all these leaders, Cub Scout leaders, Boy Scout leaders, who devote their wonderful time to leading these children and participating in these activities with them. It's a wonderful volunteer operation. If you feel the need to volunteer, check out these Cub Scouts and Girl Scout packs. They always need people to help out. If you have grandchildren or children, join them in joining these activities to provide wonderful activities for your young people to do. This is Troop 791. Troop number nine, following them. Some of these groups look like older uh, scouts, probably in the Explorer range. Here comes Cub Pack number 420 from St. John's Catholic Church. By the way, the children from St. John's Church join the parade opposite the Westminster Library on Locust Street. That's where they enter the parade route because that's where they entered it in 1868. So they march the same parade route that was marched by their ancestors in 1868. We have a pause in the parade, and primarily it's because it's such a long climb up the hill that uh, the children move slowly. And I don't know whether it's the children moving slowly or their leaders moving slowly. But either way, I certainly couldn't walk in, and I give them praise that they can do it. We have now troop number 395 from Sandy Mount United Methodist Church, Cub Scout Pack. There's a cute little vehicle in that, among that group. I don't know what you call that vehicle. It looks like it's being pulled. I thought it was motorized, but it's being pulled. And God bless the man who's pulling it. That's not an easy job. Pack 110 from Eldersburg. Cub Scout Pack 582 from New Windsor. Daisy Troop number 69. That's the youngest of the girls, I assume. There's a brownie troop. Might be troop 10157 brownies.
How about the Crossroads Christian Preschool from Westminster? Oh, look at this miniature vehicle coming here. Little boy on a bicycle, he's really moving along. But this miniature, I guess that's a miniature Chevrolet. Somebody will probably correct me on that. But that's a beautiful little vehicle, motor driven. Westminster United Methodist Church. The marching and musical group now approaching are the Arbutus Sailorettes Baton Twirlers. Sponsored by the Baltimore County Parks and Recreations. <coughs> and we thank them for sending them to be part of our parade. The youngest of the twirlers in this group are very young. Yay! They tossed the flags. They're having a tough time keeping up. Very nice girls, very nice. Beautiful automobile with the fire flames on the side. Comes another Whirling group from Westminster. Aspirations is the name of the group from Westminster.
This is a champion twirler. Madeline Alt. Very, very good. Madeline Alt from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Champion baton twirler. We now follow them with the St. John's school children. As I said, they joined a parade at the Locust Street on Main Street, Locust and Main, since that's where they first joined it in 1868, and they proceed from there to the cemetery. They, along with children from Westminster Elementary School, are the longest continuous participant in this Memorial Day observance. I don't know about you, but I think St. John's has every child in that school in this parade. It's just wonderful to see. It's a great, wonderful feeling to instill that patriotism in these young people. Years from now, they'll be telling their grandchildren that they participated in this parade. And I'm sure there are some children in this parade that their ancestors go back years and years and years of having participated in the parade. We now, we now will have a procession of people in convertibles representing various civic, civic organizations. We now have the Knights of Columbus Color Guard. The Knights of Columbus being another fraternal organization, primarily associated with the Catholic Church, but an organization which has been around for centuries, raises funds for charitable activities, primarily ARC, a great fraternal organization for older gentlemen. They have provided the funds for a van for ARC for many years. And this is the van. Fourth degree Knights of Columbus of Carroll County, James Cardinal Gibbons Assembly. Wonderful organization. This group is singing. Singing America. Calvary Baptist. The Calvary Baptist group has a float with music and they're all singing America. The 
Women of the Moose of Westminster in the yellow convertible. Two convertibles with Women of Moose, followed by the Westminster Kiwanis Club, another civic organization which does a lot for charities in Carroll County and throughout the world. We have been represented very well over the years from the Westminster Kiwanis with Dr. Sturdivant from Western Maryland College, who is a big leader, and now by Ray Riley and his wife, who are very active in the Kiwanis Club. My spotter today, by the way, is Car Charlene Jones. And that's her husband waving to him right now from the Kiwanis Club. And I thank Charlene for her activity today. The red convertible is the Lions. Deer Park, Deer Park Lions Club. Again, another charitable activity, raising funds for all of the community activities in Carroll County. We are very blessed to have these civic organizations which devote their time and effort to raise money to support all of the things that are going on. Here's Taylorsville Winfield Lions Club. If you have a chance to support these groups, you obviously see on their float medical equipment. They use their money to supply medical equipment. Oh, the Carroll County Chapter NACP. Uh, NAACP with Jean Lewis and her husband John, a wonderful group of folks who have been around for many, many years in Carroll County, conducting many activities promoting unity among people of all color and all activities. You should follow the activities of that group. They're marvelous and a great group of people to work with. I've worked with them over the years on many projects and everyone has been a success. When they tell you they're going to participate, they participate, and they provide, and they do what is necessary. The NAACP of Carroll County, we can be very proud of them. Here's the Rotary Club of Westminster. Mr. Bill Gavin, Mr. Jack Lyburn, Mr. Bob Peterson, Mr. George Sparks, all World War II veterans. We have now a Marine standing in the cab. Elks. Westminster Elks. The Westminster Elks Club, another civic organization. This is, this is amazing. Knights of, the Knights of Templar, Templar group, marching in their outfits. Another fraternal organization, which does, again, support community activities in the county. Thank you. Same to you. Door to Virtue Lodge, number 46. Door to Virtue Lodge, of course, is the men's Masonic group located on Monroe Street. They have on their float, it says our Masonic family, obviously their wives and daughters and children that they need to support their activities. An old time Uga Uga Ford, which is from the Historical Society of Carroll County. Historical Society preserving the history of Carroll County.
and they do a wonderful job in preserving that history of Carroll County. Westminster School of Gymnastics. I hope we're picking up that young lady in the truck who is doing a split like I can't believe. You have to be awfully young and nimble to be able to do those sort of things. Carroll County Hospital Center. We in Carroll County have a magnificent hospital center, as you know. For any of you who've had to use that activity, unfortunately, you received the utmost of care, the latest in the fields of medicine, and we love the Carroll County Hospital Center. Calvary Bible Church. Calvary Bible Church says they have about 50 members marching today. They have a truck with the wonderful Statue of Liberty representing our country and liberty and activities. A float with a soldier kneeling in prayer in front of uh, a, a cross. Arctic Adventure, June the 22nd to the 26th. The Liberty Bell, a beautifully, beautifully done float. We congratulate them. Celebrate uh, Learning Center participants in the red shirts. If you need some children that need some extra tutoring, you might want to check into Celebrate. They even have an unusual mascot. I'm not going to try to tell you what that represents, but it's unusual. <laughs> The children are followed by their van. We now have a procession of vehicles, convertible vehicles. The Women's Club of Westminster, the Greater Women's Club Federation, well represented on national levels with Miss Babs uh, Condon, who's the national president, Norma Jean Swan, who's the president for the state of Maryland, followed by a convertible with a lot of past presidents in it, Sally Marks, Jackie Herring, and uh, Joe Harp. Joe Harp. A great big truck. The Women's Club again with a lot of their members on the truck riding, volunteering the volunteer spirit, living the volunteer spirit. That's a junior women's club. Clearfield Bible Church has a wonderful float. Clearfield
honors the falling heroes, some marchers, in addition to the float. Heroes, freedom, stripes. Look at this patriotic car. All red, white, and blue, looks like a flag. Beautiful car. Unfortunately, I don't have a name for who owns it, but it's a great looking car and, and should be in the parade. We're now going to have a procession of, of fire equipment, antique fire equipment from the Westminster Fire Department. Remember, this is now the time of Fireman's Carnival. Support the Fireman's Carnival. A wonderful activity for the whole family. Go there, all these carnivals have lunches. If you can't make it in the evening, go to lunchtime and have a lunch. Remember, the carnivals are the primary activity for the fire departments to raise funds to, to buy this equipment. The most beautiful and up-to-date equipment imaginable. They're, I'm sure you can hear the ambulance now. That's the kind of activity activity that they need funds to buy ambulances such as that. The antique equipment is just to show off. We can be very proud of our emergency medical services here in Carroll County and we need to do everything we can to support them. At the close of the parade we have the Westminster City Police again. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for following the parade with me today. My name again is Skip Amos. I'm the chaplain for American Legion Post number 31. We're going to throw the telecast now to the Westminster Cemetery where we will televise the memorial service which will take place at the Westminster Cemetery. Good morning, thank you, and God bless America. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And we want to thank all of you for coming out for the Memorial Day exercises. This is the 148th Memorial Day exercise here in Westminster. And at this time, I would like to introduce the Reverend Monsignor James Farmer of St. John's Catholic Church, who will offer the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good and gracious God, giver of all gifts, we thank you for the United States of America. We thank you for the service sacrifice and dedication of our veterans, particularly those who paid the ultimate price for our freedom. Bless them, bless their families. Please bless our country, let's cherish the gift we have of freedom in the United States of America. In a special way, bless those serving presently in the armed forces, especially those who are in harm's way. Bring home safely to all the wars end. We ask this in Christ our Lord, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, Edith Burbage will lead us in the singing of America, accompanied by the Westminster Municipal Band.
At this time, we'll have the Gettysburg Address with Jeffrey Scott. It comes as some, something of a surprise when you study the life of Abraham Lincoln to realize how few public addresses he really made. In those days, the State of the Union message was written up and sent to Congress and read into the record. He didn't go there to make a speech like our president does today. So there's really three main speeches that he made in, to the public, the two inaugural addresses and, of course, the Gettysburg Address. And the Gettysburg Address had a definite purpose to it, to remind his, his fellow citizens what the Civil War was being fought for, to preserve re representative government and to prove that the government of, by, and people to people does work. Hear with me now, if you will, Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, delivered at the dedication of the Soldiers National Cemetery in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, on November 19, 1863. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met here today on a great battlefield of that war, and we have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate this ground we cannot consecrate this ground. We cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note, nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which those who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be dedicated here to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to the cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that the government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. Thank you, Jeffrey. At this time, we'll have the placing of the city wreath by Mayor Kevin Lutz and Chief of Police Jeffrey Spalding. Our speaker today is Louis Trott. Mr. Trott enlisted in the U.S. Navy and went on active duty July 14, 1967. He served aboard the USS Carl C. and made two tours to Vietnam. Served aboard the USS Yancey, recommissioned the ship, made a Mediterranean cruise, and then decommissioned the ship. He served aboard the USS Guadalcanal until honorable discharge in May of 1971. Mr. Trott joined the American Legion in Silver Spring, Cecil Saxton Post 41, in September of 1975. He served in various offices from assistant chaplain to first vice president, 
during the next few years, becoming the post commander in July of 1978, serving two terms until June of 1980. He served on the DEC for two years before becoming Montgomery County commander in 1983. On October 19th, 1984, he was awarded an honorary life membership in post 41. Mr. Trutt joined the Sons of American Legion Squadron 41 in 1985. Moving to uh, Kemar, he transferred to SAL membership to Squadron 282 in Woodsboro in 1986. He became a squadron commander in 1989 and was awarded an honorary life membership in the Sons of the American Legion in September 1998. He transferred then to the American Legion membership and honorary life membership to Glenn W. Eiler Post 282 in Woodsboro in 1995. He became post commander in 1998 and Western Maryland District Commander in 2010. Since serving as Western Maryland Commander, he has served as Department of Sergeant at Arms, Department 3rd Vice Commander, Department 2nd Vice Commander, and Department 1st Vice Commander. Mr. Trott went to work for the United States Postal Service in 1984 as a mail handler and for the next 10 years served in various positions. Ladies and gentlemen, our speaker for today, Mr. Lewis Trott. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you all for taking a few moments out of your time today to honor our veterans, the ones that did not make it back home with us. You know, they each have stories to tell. The crosses at Normandy, the markers at Punch Bowl, the tombs at Arlington, and the fallen heroes who rest in places unknown. From our founding revolution to today's global war on terrorism, nearly one million men and women in the armed forces have sacrificed their lives while defending America in time of war. 70 years ago, Americans were still celebrating their great victory in the European theater a triumph that came at an enormous price. But that celebration was tempered with the determination and sacrifice that still lay ahead as Americans and their allies were engaging the Japanese in ferocious fighting on the Pacific island of Okinawa. One such American was Dale M. Hansen, a 19-year-old from Wisner, Nebraska. At five foot nine and 141 pounds, Private Hansen was far from the biggest Marine in the reserve unit but he fought like a giant. He landed on Okinawa with his unit on Easter, 1945, at a critical stage of action on May 7th. Private Hansen curled, crawled to an explosion position where he used a rocket launcher to destroy a strategically located enemy pillbox. After his weapon was destroyed by enemy fire, he seized a rifle and continued a one-man assault and opened fire on six Japanese soldiers, killing four before his rifle jammed. He fought off the two remaining Japanese soldiers with the butt of his rifle, returned for cover, then advanced again with another weapon and some grenades. Private Hansen proceeded to destroy a strong mortar position and annihilate eight more enemy soldiers. For his actions of May 7th, his parents would later receive his Medal of Honor. For while Private Hansen survived the heroic action that earned him the medal and the ensuring respect and gratitude of the American people, he was killed by a Japanese sniper just four days after his amazing display of combat and valor. Private Hanser, Hansen, like so many other defenders of freedom, is forever young. Brittany Gordon lived a life of service. In the Tampa Bay Times, her mother Brenda recalled a letter that her little girl wrote to the Tooth Fairy. Dear Tooth Fairy, will you please leave the tooth under the bed? I will return it the next night. P.S. I want to take it to my school and share it with my friends. That speaks volumes of who she was, her mother said. As a 24-year-old Army specialist, Brittany was among a group that was delivering furniture to an intelligence office in eastern Afghanistan on October 13, 2012. She lost her life when a ter terrorist detonated a suicide vest. Brittany was a shining light, her cousin remembered. Like Private Hansen, Specialist Brittany Gordon is forever young. The numbers of our fallen heroes are not just statistics.
They are real people with real families who live in real communities. We can best honor their sacrifice by remembering their families who have lost so much. Long after the battlefield guns have been silenced and the bombs stop exploding, the children of our fallen, fallen heroes will still be missing a parent. Spouses will be without their life partner. Parents will continue to grieve for their heroic sons and daughters that died way too early. We need to be there for them, not just as members of the American Legion family, but as American citizens. Nobody can replace these fallen heroes, especially in the eyes of their families. But we can offer shoulders to cry on, assistance with educational expenses, and insurance that their loved ones' sacrifice will not be forgotten. Americans must remember that freedom isn't free. In fact, it's only possible because our fallen heroes have paid its high price, a price paid which enables us to have ceremonies and observances like this in this town today and across the, this great country. While exceptional valor and sacrifices occurred in all of the American wars, we did not always honor our fallen with a day dedicated in their honor. In fact, the first Memorial Day was not called Memorial Day. It is believed to have been celebrated with a parade of freed slaves and Union soldiers marching through Charlestown, South Carolina in 1865. Waterloo, New York is considered the official birthplace of Memorial Day because after it was observed there on May 5, 1866, General John Murray and General John A. Logan called on all communities to honor the war dead every year. Logan has been, had been impressed with how the South had honored the fallen Confederate, Confederate soldiers for years. In 1868, Logan, the head of the prominent veterans group, the Grand Army of the Republic, issued a proclamation that Decoration Day be observed nationwide. The date chosen was May 30th, specifically because it was not on the anniversary of a battle. Still, some communities did not want to honor Decoration Day because of lingering resentments from the Civil War. The alternative name Memorial Day wasn't commonly used until World War II. Federal law recognized the holiday as Memorial Day in 1967. As the unofficial beginning of summer, let us never lose focus of what Memorial Day means. It is not about the beaches, the picnics, or the auto races. It is a day to remember. It is a day for us to remember the promise President Lincoln made to care for him who should have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan. Remember our fallen once a year is not enough. The widows, widowers, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, and children remember every day. The empty seat at the dinner table, the smaller gathering on Thanksgiving, and the voice of a loved one heard only as a distant memory in one's mind are constant reminders that they are gone. The American Legion has always shown great pride in our nation's fallen heroes and unwaverly support of those that America sends in harm's way. On the back of every American Legion membership card is the preamble to our organization's constitution. It pledges in part to preserve the memories and incidents of our associations in the great wars. Today is another opportunity for us to give thanks. We owe it to the heroes that died and the loved ones left behind to make sure that their sacrifices are remembered and their service to this nation always be honored. Real people, real stories. May God bless them all. Thank you. At this time, we'll have the benediction with Pastor Kevin C. Clemenson, co-senior pastor of Grace Lutheran Church in Westminster. <coughs> Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we remember all who offered the ultimate sacrifice one that won for us the freedoms that we enjoy this day. Let us never forget what they have done. Let us never forget by living lives that are honorable, that keep alive the freedom, the hope, the dignity 
that has been won for all people. Help keep clear in the minds of our nation's leaders and its citizenry that we are a people that have been called to live honorable lives and that by our sacrifices and by our clear thinking can be a hope not only for this nation but for all the world. They who have passed in the line of duty are best honored by our honorable living. God bless their memory and God bless our lives. For the sake of all, we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this time we'll have the singing of our national anthem with Chelsea Ingram from WJZ. All uniformed personnel, all military personnel, and all military units, bring your units to attention and present arms. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for attending. That concludes the Memorial Day exercises for today. Thank you very much.